Welcome to Lamins.com and our lab video series on MPLS. You can find a complete list of MPLS video on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In this video, we're going to be looking at a different way of forwarding traffic into our MPLS TE tunnel, and this includes static routes, policy based routing, auto route announce, and forwarding adjacency. For a lab topology, we have eight routers R1 through R8 and Switch 1 although we're still not going to be using a router R8 and switch one in this lab. In the middle, we still have our full mesh topology between R2, R3, R4, and R5 that connects across multiple serial point-to-point -point links. In this lab, we have introduced the brand new connections between R1 and R4 across VLAN 14, while the other routers are still connected across the layer 2 VLAN as shown in this diagram. Now for our layer 3 topology, we here at the middle have a MPLS core with MPLS TE enable within the orange circle as you can see. For all of our routers, we are running routing protocol ISIS with a flat level 2 areas with the net ID. In this format with the X being a router number, we have a router R6 and R7 which is going to be our test router with a simulated test network which is this loopback 10 through 12 advertised into the network. So in this lab, we're basically going to try to get the traffic across from R6 to R7 using a different forwarding methods within the MPLS traffic engineering tunnel. Let's start with our configuration task, task number one with static route. First, we need to create a MPLS TE tunnel number one from router R1 to R2 with the following parameters. And those are the bandwidth requirement of 500 kbps and then the explicit path that goes from R1, R3, R5 and R2. Okay, so 1352, it's going to look like this. So 1, 3, 5, and 2. Okay, so that's the path of the tunnel. And then we have to configure static routes for traffic from R6 to get to R7 loopback 10 to use that tunnel. Okay, first thing first, we need to define our explicit path. As we've seen in a previous video with the dynamic versus prefix path for MPLS traffic engineering. So the command... If you watch our previous video, you see that already with IP explicit path. Name, we're going to call it R1352. Okay, just to reflect the actual path that the traffic is going to take. And then enable. And then we use the next top address. First, the uh, hop is going to be R3. We can just as easily as using R3 or router's loopback interface. We use loopback 0 for our next top address. And then followed by R5. And then followed by R2. Okay, so you can define the next address using the loopback IP as well. And then under the tunnel interface, we have to create a brand new tunnel one. Give it a IP, but we're going to reference it to the loopback interface zero. And then we specify the destination. That's going to be the R2 loopback zero, 172.16.02. And then specify the tunnel mode. It's going to be MPLS traffic inch. And then to specify the tunnel bandwidth, we use a command tunnel MPLS traffic inch bandwidth. And this is going to be in KBPS already. So for us, it's 500. And then we have to type the explicit path to the plat path option. So command is tunnel MPLS traffic inch path option one. And then since we're using explicit path, we'll choose explicit with the name of uh, uh, 1352. Okay, we'll give it a second. For the tunnel to be established. And again, just to remind you that all the, of the underlying configuration to enable MPLS traffic engineering has already been done in the previous lab. So things like configuring the Y metrics for ISIS to support the extended TLV or enabling the traffic engineering on the router interface as well as the specifying the RSVP reservable bandwidth all those has been done already okay it looks like it's taking a while there you go it came up with the line protocol as you can see it's operational uh, status is up the path is valid the signaling is shown as connected and you can see that even though we specified the routers loopbacks as part of the next address in the explicit path, it gets converted to the actual next top IP address across each of the link, which is kind of nice. So you don't have to actually figure out the actual next top IPs. Okay, so now that the tunnel is up, 
we're going to have to force the traffic that goes towards the R7 loop back 10, which is 77 uh, right here, 7700 slash 24 into the tunnel. And we need to use static routes, so just like any other routing command now configuration that you need to do with the static route. So IP route 7700 slash 24. And then since we don't really have a next hop, I mean, we can specify the next hop IP using the RT loopback, but it's easier just to do the tunnel interface one. So basically force the traffic to enter the tunnel. Okay, now on router R6, we can do a quick trace route to 7701. Sourcing from loopback 10. And you can see that now it's taking R13527, just like how we plan it. Okay, so one, three, five, two, seven. All right, so you can see pretty straightforward using a static route to accomplish a tunnel forwarding. And that's again, based on the destination subnet. Okay, so that complete our task number one. Next is our task number two, policy-based routing. So we need to configure a policy-based routing for traffic from R6 loopback 10 to R7 loopback 11 to traverse tunnel one. Okay, so this time the traffic is going to go from R6 loopback 10, which is 6600, to R7 loopback 11, which is 7710. And you can see the requirement is based on both source and destination IP. So we need to first come up with a access list to match those interesting traffic. So on router R1, we do IP access list, extend, let's call it R6 loopback 10 to R7 loopback 11. And you permit IP for the source is 6600, reverse mask 000.255 to the 7710 with the same reverse mask 000.255. Okay, next we come up with a route map, which is the component of configuring a policy based routing. So, route map, let's call this one PBR from R6, so the traffic, it's going to become from R6 entering R1, and we can just do uh, permit 10, mesh IP address, copy and paste our access list name, and then with the set, we can set the interface, and our tunnel interface is tunnel 1. Okay, so we're just going to use set command to force the traffic that match our access list into the tunnel one. So now we need to apply the route map to the input interface. That would be uh, using IP policy command with the route map of PBR from R6 and then enter. Okay, so to do a quick test on R6, that's going towards R7 loopback 11. So that's 7711 sourcing from its own loopback 10. Okay, so you can see that it's taking the exact same path as the one before. That means it's utilizing the tunnel. So it's 13527. Okay, if you were to, let's say, source our traffic from R6 loopback 11, we should not match the access list. You can see that it's taking a shorter path, which is 1427. Okay, so the one that doesn't match the access list doesn't get forced through the tunnel, and it takes an alternate path right here. Okay, so one. 427. And just to verify, we can go back and do a show route map. You can see that we've got a 15 packets matches on our route map. So using a policy based routing is another way of matching traffic and then placing it into our MPLSTE tunnel. And that complete our task number two. Next is our task number three with uh, auto route announce. So we need to create a MPLSTE tunnel, tunnel number one from R4 to R2 with the following parameters. Okay, so the bandwidth is 500 kbps. The tunnel needs to take an explicit path from R4 to R5 and then R2, and then we need to use the auto route uh, announce. Okay, so we're gonna be creating a uh, tunnel on R4 that's extend to R5 and then to R2. And then we need to verify the traffic from R6 to R7 loopback 12. Utilize this tunnel when it passes through R4 and we are allowed to temporarily shut down interface on R1 to force traffic through R4. Okay, so you might have heard uh, the term auto route announced several times already. If you watch our previous videos and you actually saw it working already also, but 
we didn't really go into detail explaining as far as what how it actually works. We just saw that when we configure auto route announce on the tunnel at the head end routers, the routers just automatically start using that tunnel to forward some of the traffics. Okay, so in this task, we're just going to go into a little bit more detail explaining the reasons behind the operation of the method. But first, let's go ahead and create the tunnel from R4 to R2. So that's configuration is going to have to be completed on R4. First, come up with the IP explicit path name. This one's going to go from R4 to R5 and then 2. So we call it R52 and then enable. Next hop address is R5 loopback and then R2 loopback. Okay, let's create a interface tunnel. IP unnumber loopback 0. And then tunnel destination is going to be router R2, loopback 0, tunnel mode, MPLS, traffic eng, and then tunnel MPLS, traffic. We're going to use the auto route, announce, and then specify the bandwidth, 500k, and then type to path explicit path to the path option number one. Okay, just kind of going through this quickly since there's nothing uh, really new about this. I've done this several times already with the tunnel configuration. Okay, give it a second and then the tunnel comes up. Let's go ahead and double check. Operationally up, path valid, signaling connected, and then explicit route goes from R4 to R5, then R2, and then terminates on R2. Okay, so now Let's see what the routing table looks like on the router R4. You can see some of these routes are already pointing out tunnel number one, and this is the default behavior when you configure auto route announce command on the MPLST tunnel. So basically any destination that beyonds the tail end routers of the tunnel will automatically start using that tunnel. So these includes, let's see, go back to this diagram. So since the tunnel terminates on the R2, the subnet right here between R2 and R7, obviously all the R7 loopback interfaces. And then the directly connected uh, subnet between R2 and the adjacent routers. All of these subnets, you can see that it's basically listed in this routing table to be reachable through the tunnel number one. And the other thing that I also want to mention to you is by default, the metrics of the tunnel that has the auto route announced configured is equal to the shortest IGP path to reach the same destination. So basically right here, in order to get from R4 to R2, it can go over the directly connected link right here. So that matrix will be 10 based on the ISS default matrix. So what it means is the matrix of the tunnel one between R4 to R2 that we can figure is also equal to that, so which is 10 regardless to the fact that the R4 actually goes through two hops through R5 to get to R2. Okay, but by default, the TE metrics is equal to the lowest possible IGP metrics. Okay, and that's why when we look at the metrics right here to R7 loopback interface, it's only 30, and that's because to get from R4 to R2, that's only caused the metrics of 10, and then R2 to R7 is another 10, and since it's a loopback, that's 10 more, so you get 10 three times, that's why it, it uh, becomes 30. Just want to see if there's a show command that actually tells you that, so we can just look at some of these with link management. Looks like interface, I'm just trying to find a show command that will show you the fact that the metrics is equal because even the show and PLS traffic engineering tunnel doesn't really tell you that it just said that the metrics type for the tunnel is traffic engineering which is the default and that's we know that's equal to the shortest or lowest IGP metrics okay just make a quick note that the tunnel label leaving R4 is 38 we do show and PLS forwarding for 7720 we also see a forwarding entries right there that's pointing into the tunnel Okay, you can see that the incoming level is 30. I just want to make quick notes on that. And also the way that the auto route announce works is only the router that has the tunnel configuration knows about the tunnel. So the tunnel doesn't really appear as the link or anything to the rest of the ISIS topology or database. So the traffic will get forwarded into the tunnel only when 
the traffic happens to be sent to R4. So R4 doesn't really advertise the link information or the tunnel information to whether it's R1 or R3. So what we need to do now, let's take a quick look at R1 and then do show IP routes 7721, for example. So R1 is currently load balancing between the connections to R3 and R4, and this is based on the IGP routing. Okay, so R1 goes send traffic that way and that way, but for us to make sure that we are seeing the traffic being forwarded into the tunnel, we're just going to have to kind of shut down the fast 00, zero interface on R1 to kind of force the traffic to go through R4 so we can verify our tunnel. Okay, so we go ahead and do that on R1, fast 00, zero then shut. Right, so now if you do a trace route from R6 to R7 loopback 12, let's say source from loopback 10, you can see that the packet is taking 14527, so it goes from 14527. So obviously once the packet hits R4, R4 placed the packet into the MPLSTE tunnel, tunnel one that we configured, and then it takes an extra hop through R5 before I get to R2 and then R7. Okay, and then just to prove that's the case, we can do a trace routes on R1 to 7721 because when you do the trace route from R1, you actually see the MPLS label as part of the trace route output. So you can see that to get to R4, you use label 30, and then leaving R4, you use label 38. Okay, and we did some show command previously that the input for that particular forwarding into R4 is 30. Okay, which is that 30, and then leaving R4 to get to R5, the out label from the show MPLS uh, traffic engineering tunnel command is 38. Okay, and this is why we're seeing 38 right there. So that's how we can tell that the traffic is in fact being forwarded into the tunnel. Okay, so that's basically how the auto route announce command operates. And most of the time you see that command is actually enabled on the edge routers on the network. If there were like MPLS VPN, it would be on the PE routers where the traffic or the packet is inherently forced through. But well, as we just like how we do it in this lab right here, if you enable auto route announce command within or right in the middle of the network, it doesn't really do you much good as it would not really attract the any traffics. Unlike the forwarding adjacency, which we will take a look in the next test, that will behave as if it's a link in the network. All right, so that should complete our task number three.